Today's Tom Kelly show is what Bob Ross would call a happy accident. Uh, I pontificate about life, talk about getting back to the fun, and then in the middle, I pick up two 70-something-year-old bikers on the side of Ocean Parkway on Long Island, and I get some wisdom. So deal with some of the audio issues. It's worth it. Uh, but this is one of those shows where I do what I do best. I start pontificating, and then I accidentally take you on an adventure. Let's start that now. The Tom Kelly Show. Everybody, I want you to go to the Tom Kelly Show. I want you all to know about the Tom Kelly Show. Okay, boy. You are experiencing the Tom Kelly Show. I am driving down uh, very slowly, at, uh, literally coming up on Fire Island National Seashore, Robert Moses uh, State Park, uh, one in the afternoon, January 2nd. Um, Happy New Year. Happy New Year. I'm in a mood. Uh, I'm coming out of the holiday depression yeah, or holiday emotions, and I feel free. I feel free. Um, and I'm rambling about what the show's about because I did one take of the show already, and it was pretty heavy. It was me evaluating 2023 and 2024. And, and honestly, uh, for those of you new to the show, I'm a good human being. I'm a comedian. I think that's the best skill I have on this podcast is I'm your friend who's figuring shit out too. And that's who Tom Kelly is. Uh, I want to offer a couple of quick condolences. I, I, I don't know if I've done them on air. I know I've done them in the secret Tom Kelly show Facebook fan group. Uh, but quick condolences too. Diana, Diana, whose husband Peter passed away. Uh, quick condolences to Marianne Stell Magic, whose sister passed away. And uh, I met her sister at uh, Uncle Vinny's Comedy Club. Uh, and it was a fun night. Uh, crazy people. End of story. Uh, let's face it, our friend Marianne, who is the den mother of the fans here. Uh, she's a crazy human being, and the one thing I do remember about her sister, I don't even remember her name, uh, but I do remember how much she, oh, there's a deer, I'm driving and there's a deer, and what I do remember about Marianne's sister was Marianne's sister appreciated Marianne's insanity, uh, you know, whereas my parents and brothers and uh, my brother and other loved ones love me for my insanity, uh, but they don't always play ball. And anyway, I'm sorry for your loss. And I want to thank you for sharing your loss. Because at the end of the year, the, and does anybody else get this way uh, at the end of the year? One confluence of emotion. You think about the people who are there. You think about the people who aren't there. You think about the people you love. Um, you think about the goals you had for last year. Did you achieve any of them? You start making your goals for next year, buying the presents, getting to the places. Uh, you know, it's a lot. It's a lot. And uh, not to get emo, but, you know, I, I don't... What was nice about Marianne and Diane... Uh, sharing their drama is, I don't want to say, oh my God, at least my year could be worse. That's such a depressing way to say it, but it, it was a reminder to focus on what you have. And honestly, even with that, I was kind of a little meh for the year. You know, I mean, and, uh, you know, so it's funny. Do you do New Year's resolutions? I do. And I keep them in a journal. And I came to the realization this year that uh, oh, I came to the realization over the years that let's make it 2020, I did my resolutions, or 2021, I did my resolutions. And then whatever it was, I looked at the year before 
And then I looked at a few years before that, and it's kind of like an old joke. It was the same crap. You know, it was all the same resolutions. I don't know what, and I don't know what the deal is. Should you have a vision board with crazy dreams? But at least that pulls you towards things. Um, the latest thing I heard in church from whoever the 18-year-old pastor was of the week was, if you don't live life with conviction, you will live it by convenience. How about that for a heavy slogan? Uh, and it is. If you don't like have the, you know, and now some will say it has to be religious conviction. Uh, some of it will be, what's your why? What's your purpose? I don't know. I don't have those answers for you today, friends. But uh, I, I know I have one goal for the year. Get back to the fun. Get back to the silly things. Get back to the comedy. Enjoy getting back to the basics. Uh, you know, listen, last year was the year of letting go of who I was professionally. And admitting who I am and where I'm at age-wise. I mean, listen, I went into the pandemic, I felt like I was 30. I, maybe 35. I was a 40, you know, I was a 41, 42-year-old. We could do the math later, 43-year-old. And I felt like I was younger than I was. Now I'm 47 and I feel like I'm older than I am. And it's time to get back to the fun. And listen, last year, you know, listen, 2022 had a lot of fun freelance work that kept me thinking, you know what, maybe freelance life is for me. And then 2023, you know, uh, some of it, I had hope for landing one job. I didn't get it. Uh, the strike happened, which threw off some things. I mean, there were some adventures, but it also saw me losing a lot of bookings that I used to have. Uh, my sleeping girlfriend comedy club went out of business. And uh, another line I heard from church, I don't know if it's a Bible verse, but, you know, people go through seasons. And I always hated it in real life. And, uh, you know, 2023 was my fall. And the religious analogy that was used for me was you have to let the leaves change color, fall to the ground, and then the leaves decompose and become the fertilizer for the tree for the next spring. Now, what's also not in that analogy is when's your winter? I don't know if I have the example yet, but I'm learning how to let go in 2023. And 2024 will be getting back to the front. What am I letting go of? Resentment. I don't know how to do that yet. Uh, what I got from Abraham Hanks was, she's a real vision boardy person. You know, she was on Oprah. She's about manifesting and vision for your life, blah, blah, blah. The one thing I like about her that's universal, whether you believe in her horse poop or not, is if you have a bad memory, you can't let go of a bad memory. You can't let go of a bad emotion with the memory. But you can let go but you can try to think of something positive, associate some happy with it. I don't know if that works. You know, if I think of the ex-girlfriend, should I think of a positive thing about her? If you think of an ex, uh, how somebody hurt your feelings, do you need to think of how somebody made you happy? I mean, the one thing these vision board people tell you is if you want to live a dream, if you want to have a goal, you have to imagine how you, what you look like and how you would feel if you have that goal come true. I'm not, I don't know what the answer is for any of that, but I do know it's time to get back to the fun. Ooh, I'm going to stop the, oh, you know what? maybe I'm not going to, let me see if I can turn on the, okay, hang on, I'm going to, so hang on, I'm going to capture something real. I saw two bikers, so minute 15 into the show, I'll send these guys the link. 15 minutes into the podcast, I saw two guys pulled over trying to fix a bike. I have a bike rack on the back of my car. And I said, hey, guys, you want me to drive you back to mainland? And here we are. I said, what are your names again? Manny's one of you. Manny and Dennis. Manny and Dennis. And they're in their 70s, and they're biking on a day when it's uh, 39 degrees out. What? And we were just saying that bikers, anybody I know who's a biker, has gone through at least one major life transition. Uh 
and you were just saying what you're 79 and breaking up with a girl okay i'm 75 just broke up with a girl after four years turned out she was a narcissist and we went right through the love bombing stage no wait what's up wait hold on i i barely know what love bombing is what's no, love bombing i didn't know any of this stuff and at my age all of a sudden people yeah are telling me yeah she was a narcissist what's love bombing what's love bombing i love you please don't ever leave me i'm very insecure this was right off the bat the first two weeks okay I'm hooked. I'm okay. Gonna, I'm never going to leave you, I promise. You know, okay. And she did everything to encourage the relationship. I'm reading books about how to have a relationship. I haven't dated anyone in 17 years. Wow. Okay, great. You know? Right. I forgot how to kiss and how to be intimate. So we had fun. You had uh, fun? And then what? She tried, how did you find out she was a narcissist? I found out at the end. Uh, well, I guess well, that's how it always end, goes. Right. At the end... <laughs> All of a sudden, out of clear blue, she discards me. I said, what? What do you mean? After four years, I thought we were going to get married. You wanted to marry me. And I changed my mind. And that's what they do. Uh, okay. They, they can, play the game. Can I ask you a real question? A sure. uh, heavy question? So I'm 47. Yeah. Single. Yeah. And whenever I meet someone and it doesn't work out, I go through this whole, oh my God, I'm going to die alone. Uh, or I get very depressed without getting yeah, too into which it. Which is normal. You were single for 17 years, it No, she like. was. She 17 was. 17 years. Got a divorce and was single for 17 years. Never dated anybody. What? Why not? Huh. Okay. So that was part of the hook. How, do you, get, how do you get over it uh, at, at 75? Therapy. Are well, you? I, I just ended therapy. Actually, it's a, in two days, it'll be one year that we broke up. And I've been in therapy for probably almost eight months. Of the last 12 months that we broke up. Only, so, like, it's funny. I'm in therapy. I'm now on my second therapist. There's a few extra issues. Uh, I'm back to my childhood therapist. Yeah, that's. They all go back to the childhood. Did you? Uh, did you? Did you have an aha moment that made you in therapy? What was your aha moment? You just felt better, or I, we were come, I was coming to the one year anniversary, and I said, you know what, New Year, I have to move on, and I can't see her anymore. And unfortunately, we bike, we kayak. Uh, oh, so she did the hobbies with you? Every single one of them. And everything out here, I'm always seeing her at one of the events, pickleball. She was on oh, pickleball. Oh, see. Th and I, and I, I bought her out. I gave her the money back and said, I, you can't play pickleball. I can't see you every week. That's interesting. See, I have trouble with that. That's why I generally date far from home. Uh long distance relationship is that what they call geographically undesirable yes oh my god the two yeah. of you are amazing yeah. the two of you are using all these kids teenage girls use uh well i went through my teens remember okay <laughs> I'm yeah a weirdo. i've been married 51 years and you're still together we're still together does your wife do the crazy things you do no no, no. we How give each other space we've always done that uh we give each other space she has her activities i have mine it's been that way probably since the beginning I was a skier, she wasn't, I was outdoors, she left. Her idea of uh, camping is that they don't turn over the, uh, they don't uh, lower the uh, blankets for a night in the hotel. Hold that, that's for you. Okay. Keep talking, okay, but really. So, uh, so 51 you're, years. So you're 51 years, but with, now you spent 51 years with a woman who your hobbies, I would argue, are incompatible. Is that fair? Not incompatible, no, no, uh, just. Different. Different. Okay. I don't object to anything she does. She doesn't object. She gives me my time as much as I need. I give her her time as much as she wants. But we have dinner together every night. Uh, well, obviously when I was working, we didn't have breakfast together, but we have dinner every night together. So let's let's focus on the dysfunctional one of the two. Uh, <laughs> my, my new friend, Dennis, who might be me. You might be me with a better bike. Uh, by the way, uh, one of our listeners, Mark Epstein, owns a bike shop in uh, Ann Arbor. Uh, it's a car two carbon bikes, Mark. I, I need one. We'll talk later. But back to us. What is your secret to getting over? Is it just a decision? Like, are you just uh, deciding to get over her and it's happening? Uh, how do I explain it? Because you did the work. You did the work. You did therapy. Right. And the therapy, you know what? It's, you know... It, you fall in love with somebody. I truly love this, and I felt 
this was the one I was going to marry her. She felt the same way. But this was all part of the psychological part of being a narcissist. When the gaslighting stage started, that's stage two. That's when they start picking on you. You know what? I don't like the shirt you're wearing. And then it makes you insecure. Okay, I'll go change it. And this was a cycle. She was playing with my head, making me very insecure, then reeling me back in and getting control of my brain and my heart and confusing me. I, I always thought it was my fault. There was something wrong with me. And that's what they do. It's all a pattern. I've read so many books about this and it's textbook. Exactly what she did. And it stems from childhood. One of her parents was a narcissist and she inherited it. So is your secret to getting over her realizing she is a narcissist? Or is well, it a decision yes. you're making about yourself? That's a good question. I didn't know what a narcissist was until I was in therapy and then the person, oh, and then turned out that we were going to the same therapist. I didn't even oh know that. Oh my gosh! And then the therapist, and that's, and the, the therapist also said, what's her name? And I said her name and she's like, I can't believe it. I'm seeing her also. And then, he told you that, or she, yes, he or she, she told, told me. Yeah, she told me. I'm seeing her. I can't believe it. And I told her to leave you because she was a narcissist and she was destroying your life. Oh, and so she told me, "You have to get away from that girl. Turn around and run, and forget about it." But it's hard to forget about someone after four years at my age. It's or at, or at any age. I have enough yeah. trouble after four dates. I'm still obsessing oh. over some people. But wait, wait, but hang on. Are you? Do you resent the therapist for telling the narcissist to break oh, up with you? Not at all. Not no. at all. No. She gave me the best advice. I didn't know that there was something wrong with her. That she's a narcissist. It's a personality disorder. And you know the abuse of manipulation, that tactics that she used. They have no feelings. They don't have empathy. And I always question her and said, "How come you don't get upset? How come you don't cry? Your cat just died after 18 years, and you're not even upset." I said, "There's something wrong here. You got to open <laughs> up." And I always said, "You got to let me into the back door." After four years, I really didn't know this person because she wore a mask that everybody saw. That oh, she's just the perfect woman. There's nothing wrong with her. Uh, and once I removed the mask and I started saying, okay, you know what a narcissist is? And then she, once you identify and accuse her of being a narcissist, that's when she goes in denial and she goes wacky. Get away from me. Don't accuse me. I'm perfect. Uh, and so be it. See, I fall for narcissists. Have you? I, 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 I read the <clears throat> book about them. I tend to fall for very very self-confident women. Mm. Like, I mean, I tend to fall for uh, beauty queens and cheerleader types. You know, yeah. people who believe... No, but I love that confidence. I like that. Uh, yeah. Were your previous relationships with narcissists? No. No. So this I, was I a... I didn't even know what a narcissist was. This was a deviation for you. Yes. Right. And now here you are. It's January 2nd, 2024. One you year. did a year of therapy, a year after the breakup. Right. Time to move on. And it's just a day. Do you feel better or are you just deciding feel to feel relieved. better? I feel relieved. Yeah? Yeah. I feel relieved knowing that it wasn't me. Uh, I felt guilty. I felt like I wanted to fix her. And we were going to live the rest of our life together. You can't fix a narcissist. They're in denial. They are perfect. Uh, they put themselves on a pedestal and they look down on everybody else. And that's what she eventually started doing to me. Right, left? Left. Well, okay. And she used me because she was somewhat of an introvert, afraid to date. And she used me because of my personality, my friends, and my activity, and my life, which she didn't have. And once she got that fulfillment... Here's our cars over left. there, just to the left. Oh, we're right there, the white Volvo. Oh, good. I'm a Volvo guy, too. We'll talk about that in a minute. <laughs> yeah. um, but So now, here you are. You let her into your social circle. Right. You, you bought her out of pickleball. Right? Yeah. How, do, what's your next, uh, like, can you enjoy your hobbies and know that she's peripherally around your life? I miss her a lot. Yeah. Because we did everything. We, we did everything together. And the intimacy part of it was what really sealed everything. And it's all gone. You know, and at my age, there's a lot of memories. I'll never find, I, I don't think I can ever find another woman to love as much as I felt I loved her and she loved me. So, so okay. I don't trust, I don't know if I can trust another woman. Let's pause for a minute. 
because I know you guys got to fix the bike and go now that right. we're at the car. I'm 46. The average age of my, my podcast listener is somewhere between 50 and 60. Oh. There's a lot of people starting over in different stages yeah. in their life. What advice do you give to somebody who has to let go of something and start over? And not just love or romance, but here you are. You're, you, I mean, you have to find your own inner happiness. I was very content with my life. Uh, I hadn't dated for a while also. And then she came along and she baited me. And I felt very comfortable. We, we just, we clicked. Uh, all I could say is you have to find your own happiness. You have to, and you can't rely on somebody. And I don't know. I, I don't know what's the next step well, I'll, is. I'll tell you what I love about you, man. And I just need, uh, that you said it at the beginning which is I just decided new year starting over and uh, that's what I needed to hear today. Yeah. All right, friends, that is a show. I should start getting back to a normal show schedule starting this week. I have some travel adventures I haven't told you about and some new jokes I want to try, but that's the mission, guys. Get back to the fun. I hope this was fun for you. Uh, I'm doing a lot on Instagram because that's where I've been getting a lot of success lately and your support has been so incredibly useful. Thank you for the likes, the shares, the tags. It, it, it makes a difference, guys. And Mary, thank you for getting Courtney Hengler from uh, Cobra Kai to notice my TGI Fridays post. All you guys, I owe you quite a bit. So how about this? Happy New Year. Thank you for taking 2023 with me. And let's get ready for a great 2024. Show love where love can be shown. Happy New Year, friends. Good night, Massapequa.